With the NFL Draft inching closer, there's still no clear-cut answer as to who will be selected first overall. With the Jaguars on the clock, which direction will they turn? A logical target could be the offensive line, a top-tier insurance policy to help protect the franchise quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, who struggled to stay upright his rookie season. If that is the direction, Evan Neal could become the first Alabama player to go number one overall since the NFL merger. Neal, who goes six foot seven and nearly 340 pounds, is not only position versatile, but has the size, skill, and athleticism to step into the starting role day one. Sometimes being a leader is not always going to be the most popular thing. You know, you do what's right because it's what's right, you know, not because it's what's going to be popular. But Neal isn't the only appealing option up front. Enter Iki Aquanu. The violent run blocker, potentially the first player from NC State to go first overall since Mario Williams in 2006. Aquanu, also a former high school wrestling state champ and track and field anchor leg, has every trait you want in the left tackle. And there's certainly one thing he does not lack, self-belief. I told all the NFL coaches I've talked to, you know, just watch my film and I don't think you'll see anyone as dominant as me in this draft. If the Jags want to focus on the other side of the ball, it seems likely they would target pass rusher and current favorite to go one overall, Aiden Hutchinson. Fresh off a dominant senior season at Michigan and insistent he's just scratching the surface. I'm at about 30 or 40 percent. Right. If they think this is 100 percent, I mean, they got something coming for them. No matter the first name called on April 28th, it's always a roll of the dice. And the stakes couldn't be higher for a franchise picking first overall for the second consecutive season. The draft a week from Thursday. Let's get some draft props. Danny Cannell and Brady Quinn joining us here on HQ. Let's start at the very top. Aiden Hutchinson, the favorite to go number one at minus 220. Javon Walker with the second best odds at plus 140. Everyone else at least 12 to 1. Danny, who are you picking? I'm going to go with a guy that's been there pretty much the last two months. I'm going to go with Aiden Hutchinson. You know, I know there's a lot of smoke and there's a lot of rumors, but at this time, I think that's all it is. I think it's just noise about Trevon Walker and kind of, you know, people just kind of rattle the cages a little bit, see if anything's out there. Maybe, you know, float some things out there to see if a team's interested in moving up for a player. Ultimately, I think the Jags are going to make the safest pick of the first round, and that's Aiden Hutchinson. You look at the skill set, what he's accomplished in his career at Michigan, uh, just the quality of player that he is. He's going to come out there high motor every time. I don't think there's a lot of bust potential, so that's why I think the Jags are going to go with Aiden Hutchinson as the number one overall pick. It is interesting, Danny, in part because I thought you might go another direction here. Typically, you're a guy who loves the plus odds, <laughs> loves trying to find value, so I thought there's a chance that you might be looking for upside similar to what Trent Baalke, who's still with the Jacksonville Jaguars organization, has looked for in previous drafts, especially with the San Francisco 49ers. We took a guy like Alden Smith, for example, who you know maybe had some off the field issues that you know displayed themselves over the course of his career, but obviously tremendous upside when he was healthy and on the field early on. Uh, so I do think there could be the potential that the Jaguars surprise some people and maybe go with a guy who's a better player five years from now, which is Trayvon Walker, or at least that's the consensus on what his upside may be, as opposed to Aiden Hutchinson. But if I had to lay money on this, it'd be Aiden Hutchinson. He checks off every single box. When you look at his game tape, his technique, his motor, just the leadership qualities and intangibles that you're looking for. You know, some people will debate with me about him being a one-hit wonder. I think when you go back and watch the tape in, in previous years, you still see some of that flash, just not to the degree that you saw this past year because he was healthy for that you know extent of a season. So I'd be putting my money on Aiden Hutchinson at this point. I think he makes the most sense to go in day one and be a starter and be a key contributor. Minus 220 to be the first overall pick, both uh, Brady and Danny, like Aiden Hutchinson, number one to the Jaguars or anybody else who wants to trade up for him. Let's go to number two. And Hutchinson's also the favorite here at plus 170 because if the Jags or somebody else trades up and they go with anybody else, you would think Hutchinson would not fall any further than two. Danny, who would be your play? There is some value on Iki Aquanu and Evan Neal at 15 to one. That's the one I'm going with. And by the way, if Aiden Hutchinson is on the board, I mean, tell me Detroit's the perfect fit playing in the same, you know, vicinity of Michigan and Ann Arbor there. It's only an hour away. That would be the easiest pick of the century. But since both Brady and I like Aiden Hutchinson first, I'm going to go with Iki Aquano here going number two. I think if you're talking about Dan Campbell building from the inside out, building a physical run game, 
there's nobody better to go with than Ike Aquanu, who's the best run blocker in this draft. I mean, he's athletic. We heard about his, you know, being a wrestler and a track athlete when he was in high school. But he really is a mauler that would establish the line of scrimmage, which the run game is making a little bit of a return to the NFL. When we think about, oh, Patrick Mahomes just a few years ago, the Chiefs were throwing it all over the yard. We've seen the return of the run game in teams like the 49ers and the Titans with Derrick Henry. And I think this is the perfect way for them to establish a physical ground game up front would be with Ike Aquano. And I love the value here uh, at 15 to 1 odds. Yeah, either tackle really you have value here, right? And I think that's – I'm going on the other side of this one. With Evan Neal out of Alabama, would make a lot of sense. I think he's going to be your best player available here. And, he, and his you know, best football still might be ahead of him as well. You just don't find many people in general with the type of size and athleticism, that combination that you see on tape watching him. He's versatile. You can put him in different spots too. So there's value in that. But I think more so than anything else, contradicting what Danny said, it's a passing league. The reality is you better be able to have guys – or able to pass protect your franchise quarterbacks, especially considering the Lions have a couple of picks in the first round of this draft. There's nothing that says they couldn't come back and get a quarterback somewhere in the first round to pair with that tackle. Kind of how my draft went back in 2007 when the Browns took Joe Thomas number three overall and ended up coming to get me at 22. I could see something very similar happening if the right quarterback starts to drop in the draft and the Lions start to make a move and look towards their future. But nonetheless, they'll have a cornerstone at the tackle position for years to come if they take Evan Neal at this spot. Okay, both going tackles there at 15 to 1 at number two overall because of the value. At number three, the favorite to go number three overall, guys, is Icky at plus 180. And Trayvon Walker is still out there as well, Danny. Yeah, and that's where I'm going here, Trayvon Walker, because you heard me say Aiden Hutchinson one, Icky Aquano two, and Walker here at three. And it's been a pretty a remarkable rise through the ranks. I mean, Brady and I have been doing these mock, mock drafts with Ryan Wilson pretty much all season long. And even just a month ago, Walker wasn't in the top 10. And now all of a sudden there's rumors, a number one overall pick. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is that people are falling in love with the workout and the shirts and shorts, you know, measurables and 40 times and vertical leaps. The film is great. Don't get me wrong, but it's always been great. But all of a sudden people saw him at a pro day and they're popping in there as the top three. But ultimately, I do think Houston will find that this player is just too good to pass up. If he drops in their lap, I'm sure they'll feel like, hey, this is one of those players, a tremendous amount of upside. So I'll go with Trevon Walker here at plus 552. I think the value is pretty good. I'm going with Chalk here. I'm going with Icky. And I think it's because when you look at these two tackles, Evan Neal, Icky, Kwani, whichever order they go in at the top of this draft, it's just hard to find guys that I think have separated themselves as the best tackles in this year's draft class. You know, Danny talked a lot about his upside, his athleticism, his past being a wrestler, his past, you know, being a track athlete. The thing that stands out the most is just the willingness to want to bury the guy across from you in the dirt. Um, you don't see many guys with that sort of mentality coming in the NFL anymore. So that's going to bode well for his his run blocking skills. And Houston's clearly going to be looking for, uh, you know, a cornerstone of that left tackle position, whether it's for Davis Mills or another quarterback that they that they put, could potentially absorb uh, either during the draft or after the draft is over, wherever the case may be. Uh, so they could use all the help they can get. You're, these are rare commodities in the draft. You just don't find guys like this that are plug and play tackles, and especially ones with the upside like Ikea Aquanu. So he, to me, is the favorite in this spot. If he doesn't go higher like this, then, then Danny said he going number two. We're doing draft props with Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell, and now let's get some over-unders. Now, the over-under for quarterbacks in round one is right now set at three at Caesars Sportsbook. So you got Willis and Pickett probably going first round, maybe Corral. Maybe Ritter, which would put you over the top. Brady, I'm coming to you first. Over under three quarterbacks taken in the first round. You know, I wouldn't play this bet as it currently stands. I'd like to see there, you know, be some sort of, you know, half point here one way or another. I think at three, it's more likely going to be a push. You're going to see Malik Willis. I think people are going to be um, attracted to the upside, the, you know, the arm strength, the athleticism, what he can be in the future. So I do think he'll go somewhere in the first round. Kenny Pickett's got the best tape. It'd be really surprised to me if he dropped out of the first round given how he played this past year. So there's two. And then I think you're going to see a combination of any one of these quarterbacks taken somewhere in the back end, middle part of the first round. And that's Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter, Matt Corral. It's going to be one of those three guys you're looking at on your screen right now. And I think you could make a case that there's enough teams who have a desire for quarterback, whether it's Carolina at number six or later on the draft with the New Orleans Saints. Maybe they are looking at Jameis Winston as 
We'll see how things work out this year, but we wouldn't mind drafting a guy who we feel like could be the future. Uh, no idea what the Pittsburgh Steelers are still thinking with with their quarterback room at this point in time, signing Mitchell Trubisky in the offseason, having Mason Rudolph at this point. Uh, so I think there's a number of places you could make the case, uh, could utilize a, a first-round quarterback either to come in at, at some point this season or for the following season, depends on, depending on how that bridge quarterback looks. So if I had to lean one way, I'd say – the over, but it's probably going to hit a push. So I'd wait to make this bet. You know, give it a week, see where things go. I've maintained all offseason leading into this draft that this quarterback class is not good. Uh, it's downright awful. So I'm going to stick with my guns here, although I'm still kind of nervous because of the overdrafting of quarterbacks, the trend that we've seen over the last decade. Like a team will fall in love with a player. You say, oh, it's the most important position of the game. You start looking up and down your roster, your depth chart, or your quarterback position. You're like, hmm, maybe we should take this guy before another team does. I'm with Brady that I think three is probably the number that it falls in. And if you're not getting value one way or another, then why play it? But I'm going to say under, and I totally agree. I think you've got the two locks, Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett. I think you'll probably see Matt Corral as the next off the board. And then the risk that you run is, is there a team that drops, you know, that tries to trade up into the first round, that 32nd pick, you know, much like we saw Lamar Jackson, other players, you know, you see all of a sudden a team says, oh, we want a quarterback on that rookie contract. So we're going to make that move. But I don't think a team makes that move. And maybe that is the third quarterback taken in this draft, especially when you're starting to hear rumblings about Baker Mayfield still out there. The Panthers were interested in him. I think the market movement that we've seen, the quarterback movement this offseason, is a testament to how bad this draft class is at quarterbacks. I mean, we've seen wild trades, teams make moves because this tr this class is not that good. So I'm going to stick with my guns and say the under hits, but most likely it'll probably be three on the number. And that might come down to that last pick in the first round, the Detroit Lions with their second first round pick. And Ryan Wilson has them taking Kenny Pickett with that 32nd overall pick in his latest mock draft. Seven full rounds on CBSSports.com. Continue to pick some props here with Danny Cannell and Brady Quinn. Let's go to offensive linemen. And you guys do have a hook on this one. It's seven and a half offensive linemen in the first round, Brady. I'll go ahead and say the over in this case. I mean, if you just look on CBSSports.com right now, you know, seven of the top 32 prospects are offensive linemen. And I think when you're looking at this class in particular, there's five offensive tackles you could make a case right now. Could very well go in the first round. We've already talked about Iquanu and Neil, just a couple. Uh, Cross is another guy. Charles Cross out of Mississippi State. You'll probably see go in the top ten. So that's three off the list right there. Tyler Linderbaum is 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 the best uh, center in this draft class. I'd be shocked if he got out of the first round. Zion Johnson, the guard out of Boston College, he's another name to keep your eye on. There's five. And I think when you look at this uh, draft class in particular. There is a bit of a drop off between, between some of the top guys reviewing uh, an offensive tackle as well as the interior players that you're going to see a run on these guys in the first round. And then after that, maybe there's a bit of a break. I think we've seen that in subsequent years, too, where you see more of a run on DB, safety, skill position players. Once we get out of that first round, the second, third round, where teams are looking for those big nasties up front that they can help win the battle line of scrimmage. So I'm going to take the over here. I feel pretty confident or, or safe in, in that number hitting. I went with the under. I went and looked. I'll tell you this. I went and looked at Ryan Wilson's latest mock, and it was right at seven. So I was like, all right, bam, there's my seven. There's the under that hits. Now, no one's ever perfect. No one ever has that perfect, uh, you know, eight ball that you're looking at to see in there what the future holds. That, But I'm going to say it's going to be seven. And, and the, the the mock draft that I looked at had Tyler Lindbaum, uh, Linderbaum at 31, which if – and I think he should be a first-round pick. But if that's the barometer with – you know, where it's just on the cut line of being a first rounder or not, find me somebody else behind him that's going to be better than him, that's going to go higher. And I don't think you'll find one out there. So I went with the under here as well. I think there's a lot of depth at the wide receiver position. Guys like Jahan Dotson who are right on the cusp of maybe being first rounders. I think there might be that skill set player, the wide receiver position that might come in. We've seen that trend as of late, the slew of, uh, just a slew of wide receivers who have gone off the board. So I'll say under, but I'm going to say it's right at seven under that seven and a half. All right, how about some conference props now? The SEC over under for players taken in the first round, 10 and a half. A couple of years ago, it was a record 15. Brady, over or under 10 and a half players from the SEC in round one? Over. Uh, look, we've got 12, I, I believe, just looking at 
you know, our top 32 prospects on CBSSports.com. So clearly we're looking at this thinking that if teams go with the strategy of best player available, there's gonna be a lot of SEC guys going. In fact, look at all the names, look at all the Georgia players. Their entire defense to, it could equate to half, if not over this number when it's all said and done. So uh, I think the over is the safest play here. There's just too much talent in the SEC. It's obviously one of the bigger conferences too, uh, but even per capita, uh, they've got the most talent. They've demonstrated that year after year after year, both on the field and in the draft. It's over. It's over. I'm 100% with you, Brady. Uh, and we've seen this trend, whether it was LSU when they had all those players drafted in the first round, um, you know, Alabama historically, when they have a national championship year, you see players get, there's going to be probably five Georgia defenders alone taken. I don't think George Pickens, who was in that list as a first round pick, but there's a Lewis scenes probably going to be the one that I think goes in the first round that makes it five for them. And then you look around the other talent, Evan Neal, who we've talked about already. Uh, Kenyon Green, who we didn't talk about, but is probably going to be a first rounder. Um, Derek Stingley is going to be a first rounder. So there's like, you start getting to eight or nine and all you need is a couple more. Traylon Burks, you can start rattling them off. I think this might be one of my favorite plays of the draft is to take the over. Um, it's the strongest conference. They promote it. They talk about it all the time, but they've been, they've played the part recently. So I'd say over 10 and a half, and it's probably going to be pretty clear over this. Maybe it's even closer to 12 players in the first round. 10 SEC players in the first 22 selections in Ryan Wilson's latest mock, 11 total in that first round, most of them coming in the first half of his mock. Let's move to the Big Ten. Lower, almost cut in half. Six and a half Big Ten players selected in the first round. Brady? I'm taking the over again. Look, the Big Ten had the second most players drafted uh, last year in the NFL draft, and I think you can make the case it's the second most talented conference in college football. And by the way, it's comprised of essentially two teams. It, it's Michigan and it's Ohio State. I mean, if Aiden Hutchinson goes somewhere in the top couple of picks, we don't know how David Ajabo with the injury is going to be uh, looked at, but there's no doubt he's a first-round talent. Daxton Hill at safety for them, there's three. You got Alave, you got Garrett Wilson, there's five. I mean, you start counting on one hand how many guys could potentially go up in this group. Uh, you get to that number pretty quick. George Karloff, this is another you got to keep around as far as an edge rusher. Uh, he's very capable of falling into that list. So uh, I think the the Big Ten, which is the second best conference, and I, I think when you, you go down and look at some of the players, especially offensively, is we look at some of the big boys up front, a guy like Tyler Lindenbaum, there's no doubt um, they're going to hit that over number when it's all said and done. All right, I'm on the opposite side of Brady here. I do agree with you, the Big Ten, second most powerful conference out there. But I'm going to say under. A lot of those guys that we were mentioning, to me, are more question marks. Like Carl Loftus, where does he go? David Ajabo, where does, what is the injury play uh, a factor in there? Jahan Dotson, who I mentioned before, does he sneak into that first round? There's just way too many question marks that are right on the cusp. Where do they actually end up going? I think might be closer uh, to the bottom. So, and the, like I think the two wide receivers from Ohio State, do they both go first round? Probably, but is there a chance one of them drops? I think there's just going to be way too much question marks with the Big Ten about are they certain first round picks? And I'll I'll go with the uh, the under here and say it's going to be around six. All right, we Danny, know it's not the ACC. Brady. We yeah, know the ACC is <laughs> right. challenging. Ike so. Aquano is going to be number two overall, baby. We're going to own that one. Yeah, that might be it out a while. Changes. Could be number one that overall. He's, I think he's number one in Ryan's latest mock draft and has been number one in Ryan's mocks of late. Let's recap the picks here on the props from Brady and Danny. And the first pick they agree on, Aiden Hutchinson at minus 220. They they both go with, with offensive tackles for the number two overall pick at 15 to one. Neil and Aquano and... Brady's Mr. Over today. Danny's Mr. Under. So a lot of disagreement there, uh, but they do agree on over 10 and a half SEC players drafted in the first round. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.